Hi there, good morning children. Welcome back to this online Sunday School Share. Okay, today's topic is the end of the age. Okay, before we finish, uh, before we start reading, shall we go to the Lord in prayer? And uh, also remember to prepare yourself to get the Bible as we finish uh, this prayer and then we'll start the, share, the reading of the Bible text. Okay, thank you Father God for giving us this time that we can come together once again to come and read your word. Open our hearts, open our minds, that your word be an instruction for us to follow. And that may the children read this word and be able to know that you are always be with them and help them in the understanding of the Bible. We pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Okay, children, today the reading is taken from the book of Mark, which is found in the New Testament, chapter 13, verses 1 to 3. Okay, so... Uh, Get yourself the Bible. Okay, can you turn with me to the to the book of Mark in the New Testament, chapter 13, verses 1 to 13. Okay, so the topic for this uh, morning sharing is the end of the age. Shall we go into the Bible? And then I'll share with you the message uh, with referring to the text for this morning. Okay, verse 1. As he was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings? replied Jesus. Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. Verse 3. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, where will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? Verse 5, Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen. But the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. Verse 9. You must be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and flock in the synagogues. On account of me, you will stand before governors and kings as witnesses to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given you at that time. For it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Verse 12. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Here ends the reading of the Bible text for this morning. May God bless the reading of His Word. Now I shall go through with you the sharing for this morning's text and um, try to explain to you what is this uh, message for this text about. The title is The End of the Age. So actually it is Jesus telling us when His second coming will be. Okay, so you remember just now when we read through we read through all the signs that he mentioned to us. Okay, shall we all go through again, once again? But before that, let's go into the context of this uh, story that Jesus was uh, uh, discussing with the disciples. Where was this all happening? Actually, he was at that time coming up from the temple. You see, he was uh, preaching. He was uh, teaching the people there in the temple and probably it's by evening, so they all leave the temple, okay? And uh, at that time, uh, Jesus told them about all this and then told them not to fear and to have to believe and have faith, okay? And that Jesus was also telling them that uh, it's not going to be an easy road to follow. But then, nevertheless, the end is a gift from God that they will be safe for this uh, uh, belief that uh, in Jesus, okay? And uh, 
Jesus was also uh, telling them a lot about all this happening in the temple. And uh, as they were walking out, remember, he, the disciples were telling him, look at this magnificent building. They are so beautiful, they are so big and they are so huge. But Jesus told them, no, you just look at this from the external. They look beautiful, but internally they are not good. Okay, because the people there, the religious people, no? were not uh, obeying uh, Jesus. Okay, they were doing their own thing and they were in fact uh, against some of the things that Jesus was telling them. So Jesus found it very difficult to tell them what to do. Okay, so these are the things that people always look from the outside. They thought that this beautiful building, this huge temple, you know, it's a very huge temple that uh, it is uh, very magnificent to this to the eyes. Okay, but Jesus told them this temple will one day be destroyed and no stone will be left after. Okay, so this is what uh, the the background of this uh, uh, message of this uh, uh, text is about that is to come when Jesus was telling them about this and all this while Jesus was doing the teaching to the people and also uh, telling them about what to expect and what to have and the people were very eager to find out what actually uh, Jesus is telling them and they are very eager to find out what to expect you know that uh, to what Jesus was saying okay shall we go into the details of what we went through uh, just now in the Bible so okay so we started out with that Jesus was walking out of the temple and one of his disciples was actually telling him look teacher what massive stones that means you know the building was very huge that temple you know it's actually a very big temple that was built during the time of uh, uh, as early as uh, the during uh, King Solomon's time and uh, they were actually destroyed and rebuilt again you know and each of the each time they they they, they built they became uh, they they tried to make it very very great you know and uh, the people were very impressed by that kind of building okay and they it was so magnificent because they were using very big blocks of stones you know the stone can be as huge as a room you know so it looks very gigantic can you imagine that you know i mean when i first uh, went to uh, putrajaya you remember Putrajaya has got this huge building, you know, when you look at them, they are so huge and so magnificent, you know, because we we, we, we normally don't see these huge buildings. You know, you go to Putrajaya, you see all the huge buildings and the places were so spacious and so magnificent, you know, so you would just marvel at them. Okay, it's just like what the disciples and the followers of Jesus were telling Jesus, look at how big these buildings were all about, okay? But then Jesus told them, do you see all the great buildings? Not one stone here will be left on another. That means they will one day crumble, they will all one day fall, you know, and will disappear. So this is what Jesus was trying to tell them. Okay, but then to the disciples, they still would not be able to understand what it is about. And the disciples want to know when this would happen, you know. And uh, Jesus uh, began teaching the disciples of things to come. That means we're trying to tell him them what to expect before all these things will happen when the buildings will come down. Okay, and even the disciples uh, who were close to him still do not quite understand what uh, Jesus meant. Okay, so as they were walking out of this temple, they were passing by this uh, Mount Olives, a place that's near the temple ground, and it was just opposite the temple. So in private, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked. Jesus because they were they have so many questions that they were not able to really understand what is to come so they quietly asked Jesus what are the things to come that you look for okay so the disciples are very eager to understand what Jesus meant so let's go into this what things to come before the second coming of Jesus okay so first Jesus told the disciples that the end of the age will come when certain things happen, first, that the wars, there will be wars and rumours of wars. Okay, we have seen also so many wars and rumours of wars, you know, but uh, then Jesus was saying that 
Do you see this? It's going to come, but it's not immediate. Okay, but there will be all these things that will be signs that is coming. Okay, then the other thing that uh, Jesus was telling them that secondly is uh, also warn them to watch out for people who pretend to be the Messiah. You see, everybody uh, knew that uh, during that time that a Messiah will be coming. Okay, so in this. At this present age also, there are a lot of people who claim that they are Jesus. There are people who claim that they are Messiah. You know, so we can also read in newspaper about all these people. So this is another sign that uh, the coming, the second coming of Jesus, will tell us about this. That there are people who claim to be the Messiah. And thirdly, the other sign that Jesus was telling them is that signs of earthquakes, famines. Okay, so this. Natural disasters, we also read and hear about this nowadays. You know, they are coming more and more. So every time when there is one coming, people say, Oh, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. Yes, Jesus is coming, but we do not know. Okay, so Jesus is telling us that, look, these are all the signs that will tell them that Jesus will be coming. Okay, so this is one of them. And then Jesus finally said that, first, and the most important of them all, is that the gospel must also be preached to all nations. Okay, today we still do not know whether all the nations have heard of the Gospels. Most likely most of them will have heard but not to all parts of the world. Okay, so today we have got so much uh, communications uh, facilities that this uh, Gospel can be heard. Especially the internet can reach out to many people. Unlike those days, you know, the Gospel can only be reached by the person who preached uh, from face to face kind of uh, uh, communication. But today is through the internet, like I'm talking to you now. Okay? So this will be the kind of a uh, message that can be sent out to reach to as many people as possible. But still we do not know that there are still, many people still have not heard about the gospel. Okay? Then fourthly, Jesus has told them the disciples that they should be on guard on their guard. Okay, must be ready. Okay, they may be arrested and beaten because they follow after Jesus. Okay, because there are many people who are against Jesus. Just like also during Jesus' days, uh, the religious people were not very happy with him because of what he told them, how they must also uh, follow in a way that Jesus had taught them. But they were not uh, happy with what Jesus told them. Okay, so today is still the same. There are many people who still don't want to follow Jesus, who don't believe Jesus. Okay? There are many other people who have their own religion. They believe their own uh, leaders and all that. So, and because of this, there are a lot of people against and you will face a lot of persecutions. Persecutions means people will attack you. Huh? People will uh, fight with you. You know, some may even get killed. So these are some of the things that uh, Jesus said, be on guard, okay, be on guard. So there are always people who are against you for following Jesus. Okay, then fifthly, other things that will happen is that brother betraying brother, family fighting, okay, children rebelling against their parents. So all these are happening, we see them all, okay, they are all happening now, okay, and there's going to be more and more of this to come. And finally, Jesus also said that others will hate believers of Jesus. But Jesus promised that those who stand firm, that means those who stay to believe in Jesus, the faith in Jesus, in the end will be safe. Okay? That means you will inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, so this is a message that God uh, that Jesus had told the disciples. Look for these signs that are coming and stay and be prepared and be able to stand firm huh, until the end when Jesus comes. So they will all be safe. Okay, so here ends the sharing for this uh, text for this morning, okay, about the second coming of Jesus. Huh? And uh, what do we expect and what do we see from these uh, uh, examples and uh, signs that Jesus had given. Okay, so next, what do we learn from this? Okay, the first lesson that we learn from this is we take note 
of the word of God. Okay, as written in the scripture. That means the scripture is true and Jesus had told us about all this and then he even predicted that the temple would be destroyed. Okay, and it was destroyed huh? after uh, not many years after Jesus' death. Okay, so the stone, the temple was flattened to the ground. Okay, so the prediction came true. You know, that was Jesus' prophecy. Okay, so that is the word of God, which is true. Okay, and then Jesus also told us that what we see is temporary. Okay, so and uh, what we don't is eternal. Okay, because the example of building, the building may be so strong, so big and so huge, but then one day it will also collapse because over time, damage, uh, over time, many, many other uh, things may happen to the building. So it will one day also collapse. Okay, and uh, what Jesus is trying to tell us, we focus on eternal things. Okay, what we don't see, okay, which is eternal. What we don't see is like eternal life, the joy, the peace that God had promised us to have. Okay, so we have to focus on these things. Just like when we sing this song, Seek first the kingdom of God. That is what we focus on, the kingdom of God. Okay, and then all the righteousness will be given unto us so that we can share, we can have the wonderful gift of God's uh, love, uh, God's peace, joy, and all that. Okay? So you remember that song? Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened. So this is the thing that uh, Jesus uh, wants us huh? to, to go for this, to look for this. Okay? Seek first the kingdom of God. That is the kingdom of God which is eternal. Okay? Unlike what we see which is not eternal, which is temporary, okay? Just like the building, the example given by Jesus, okay? And then the third point that we learn from this lesson is we have to keep watch, be on guard, okay? And then it's to test our faith in defending the gospel, okay? Because there are many people who may be against us for following Jesus, okay? But we must be faithful to God. We have to trust God, okay? And how do we do that? By hearing the word of God. Okay? When we hear the God, word of God, we strengthen our belief that God's promise. Okay? Just like Jesus' prediction that the building will fall. You know, I mean, that is as true as what Jesus had told us. Okay? So we have to go and uh, have the word of God so that our belief is strengthened. And what is our belief? Our belief that we have eternal life. Okay, and just like also like what uh, two weeks ago I shared with you on the story of Jairus' daughter, remember? Okay, Jairus was a very faithful person, officials, okay, and he heard that the, uh, his daughter was sick and he heard that then suddenly when Jesus was asked to go to his house to look and probably to heal the daughter, somebody from the house came and said, your daughter is dead, you know? So Jesus overheard that, remember that? And he said, don't be afraid, just believe, okay? Because he knew that Jairus was a very faithful person, okay? So that was what uh, Jairus uh, did, okay? He believed Jesus, okay? Now, fourthly, also we also learn from this lesson is that there are many false teachers, okay? So we must use the Bible as a guide. Huh? to see whether this person is an honest or good person or is a false teacher who teaches bad things. Okay, so we must be able to know that. So how do we know that? We must read the Bible. We must know what uh, is Jesus teaching us. Okay, not something else that uh, Jesus is not teaching us. So we know that this person is not true. Okay, now fourthly, now, fifthly, there will be signs uh, of these things happening, all the natural disasters coming, you know, famines, war, and all that kind of thing. But that doesn't mean that it's going to come. This is coming tomorrow, but the thing is, it is going to come, you know, but not any specific time frame. Okay, so it is telling us that these are the signs 
Uh, we do not exactly know. Even Jesus doesn't know when it is coming. Okay. Now, fifthly, be ready. Okay. So we have to be ready always. Okay. The important principle Jesus wants us to get from this. Okay. So how he's going to come anytime. So we have to be ready, prepared for Jesus. These signs are happening. Okay. Jesus is telling us. You know, but just be ready. I just I do not know when is the time. Okay? But it's very sure that he is coming. Just like when we read in the Apostles' Creed. Remember, children? Uh, we read uh, together every time when we come to Sunday school worship, the Apostles' Creed. Okay? Uh, I shall read to you again if you can just uh, listen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. That means that is the second coming of Jesus. Okay, That is our belief. That is our belief. We believe that Jesus will come again. Okay? And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the universal church, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Okay? So when we read this Apostles' Creed, we are subscribing to the belief that Jesus is coming again. Okay? From hence, He shall come huh, to judge the quick and the dead. So that is the coming. Okay, that is what we have learned in the Sunday school. Okay, and that is that belief that Jesus is coming again. Okay, so remember that. So we read the Apostles' Creed. We try to remember what it is meaning to us. Okay, and lastly, Jesus also said, "It's a call to action to you and me." Okay, that to spread the gospel message and to preach to all nations okay and to share with friends okay this is nothing new to us because in our sunday school motto you remember we have this the life that pleases god what must you do you worship god you memorize bible verse and you bring new friends so when you new bring new friends you are telling them about jesus Okay, you're spreading the gospel to them. So on your part, you can do that. You can share this with your friend in school, your, your neighbors, or whoever that you meet, or maybe even your relatives who still do not know Jesus. Okay, so children, this is also uh, a way of uh, preaching, okay, to tell friends about this. And even in this sharing time, you can also tell your friend, come, listen to this uh, story and listen to the story about Jesus. Okay? You can also tell them about this link that they can come to know Jesus. Okay? Each and every one of us can do our part in this. Okay? So here ends uh, today's uh, sharing and I hope you enjoy it and I hope you will share with your friends and uh, I hope you have uh, learned a bit from what we share today. Okay, shall we go to the Lord in prayer? Okay, thank you, Father God, for this wonderful time that you can share together and you can speak to us through your word in the Bible. Let us, from this lesson, focus on the eternal, on whatever that is not visible to us. That we pray that these children will understand that what you want us to be Okay, thank you for your word, Lord, that we can use it as our guide in our daily lives. We pray that you will bless us, you will continue to teach us, and you will protect us from harm. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.